Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, the headline you see on the screen, and if you can't see it because it's small, um, take a screenshot, and then you can zoom in on it. Uh, that says all you need to know about the governments and what's going on. The push is suddenly very, very intense to force the world to accept this. And we know this is not godly. At all. They were not made in the image of God. That type of theology, that type of belief, that type of doctrine, that type of understanding, that, that is not godly. So this will tell you all you need to know about what's going on. And, and the world is pushing this very, very intently. There is a sudden push to it. They've moved COVID to the side because that back backfired kind of on them. And now they're coming up with something new. We have to be on our guard every day. We have to watch. Be careful. And not let the biblical mandates be forgotten. We want to stand up and remind people what the truth is. All the time. Now, this is what we're going to cover today. And that was my segue to our subject matter, which is warped and sinning. <clears throat> you guys know these scriptures. We've covered them recently. This is contained in Titus. There's other stuff that links to this. This is very important. When I talk about somebody who believes in anything other than a pre-tribulation rapture, and when you hear me say, how can they believe something that's not in the word of God? Yeah, we have a lot of people who are faithful who don't believe in a pre trib rapture. Listen, there's a difference between somebody who is either ignorant of the facts or doesn't understand fully what the doctrine is or how it works, or is ignorant to the to what's the, the history of that doctrine contained within the Bible. And someone who is purposefully ignoring the word of God and purposefully turning away from the truth. Big, big difference. A person who doesn't understand or is ignorant to the, what the facts are, or ignorant to history, that person, perfectly saved, just doesn't know. That's why we teach. That's why we show the scriptures. That's why every time I start off my, any conversation I have with somebody about this subject with, who's the restrainer in 2 Thessalonians 2? Let's start there. We identify that, then we, then we have a jumping off point. And then I take them to all the other places. The other people, for the sheer joy of tormenting others, adopt a different doctrine than the uh, than one that is true. And they always fight against the pre-trib. I don't ever see anybody argue and fight against any other version than the pre-trib. These people, for the mere joy of tormenting others online and not having to suffer any consequences of it because it's a great, it's perfect. You can sit behind a keyboard and be the worst, worst jerk there is and nothing will ever happen to you. Well, not true. You will get found. You will have to answer for that. But they feel empowered and emboldened to sit behind a computer screen or a keyboard and to lash out at those. You go to their channel on YouTube, they're quick to tell everybody else about doctrine and theology and, and you know, by biblical understanding. No videos, they're not teaching anybody, they have no blogs, they have no nothing. Who are you to say anything? You're not out here doing any work. You're not out here trying to help people understand. Maybe there's a reason for that. What they won't do is listen to reason. A believer will. A believer will sit down and say, show me what you found, and I'll show you what I found. These other people who are warped and sinning, they're not interested in that. They only want to hate. And according to Christ, that's murder. No murderer has eternal life abiding in him. These people aren't saved. Now, someone who just doesn't know, 
they don't believe that. Because I had somebody ask me, you know, well, I'm, I'm listening to a guy. He doesn't believe in a preacher rapture, but he seems pretty good on everything else. Do you see a problem with that? No. Go ahead and listen to him. Talk to them. But listen and pay attention, because if you start to hear other things change, there may be a serious problem with their theology. That's why I quit listening to Vaudi Bachman. Uh, Vaudi Bachman, I think, believes, but there's something wrong. Because it wasn't just one or two things. It was a list of things that he's gotten completely out of whack. That's a problem for me, because what else is he wrong on? See, if you got one thing wrong, okay, I get it. Not everybody's going to get it perfectly. I don't either. But I'm listening to see if there's anything else you're off on. When it gets important, and it's important if even if you have something like the rapture. I mean, if you don't believe in a preacher rapture, but you're a faithful Christian, you're still going to get raptured regardless. But. If that person is doing this for the sole purpose of being obstinate and disobedient to the word. They have a problem. Now, some people, perfectly faithful, have no problems. They understand the truth. They're doing just fine. They're just, they believe something different on a few things. That's no big deal. We, you can work with that. But some people go out of their way to do the exactly the opposite. Now, if you're listening to a person that's like that, that's fine. <laughs> Listen to everything else they say. Prove everything they say. Take everything they say to the Word of God and prove it. If you find something wrong, uh, my last church, they, there was a big, huge blow up about predestination. And the pa I had a conversation with the pastor. I was helping him rewire his flat trailer. And he said, uh, what do you think? And I said, the predestination is in the Bible. It's all over the scripture. But predestination doesn't mean pre-saved. And if a person thinks they're pre-saved and that puts them in a higher position over others, that's a problem. But predestination, we are predestined. The Lord knew us from the beginning. Now, funny enough, he didn't understand fully this because in seminary they didn't teach him this. I didn't either until I looked more into it. But the other people they had to blow up with, I think, had the idea that they were pre-saved. can't be pre-saved you still you still must say yes lord i want you to be my lord and they'll use that as an advantage over others that's where the problem comes in that's where the issue comes in that's where the sin comes in because now they're self-elevating <laughs> and which makes them self-condemned So it's important for us to pay close attention to everything everybody says. I even encourage you guys to make sure you listen to what I say. Test everything I say. If I'm off on something, say something. Let me go look deeper. Because I'm just as fallible as anybody else, if not more. But there are people out there, they're not off just because they're off. They're way off. And it's due to some emotion or some agenda or something like that they have when i start to see that kind of stuff in a person when i start to hear things like well i told them i believed in this to get this position uh, but really i don't believe in that i believe in this that's a problem for me that that's lying and why would a person do that so i have to not get involved in that kind of stuff i can't listen to somebody like that and if they're off on you know five ten fifteen different things like big stuff there's a problem with that. Now, if somebody disagrees with me on rapture, don't care. I talked to Dr. David Mackerth doesn't believe in a preacher of rapture. He says he doesn't see it in the Bible. That's fine. He is on point on everything else. I talked to him by email. He's actually a wonderful, wonderful man. And I'm glad he's winning his lawsuit, that uh, his court battle that he's going into. Uh, I've even donated to him uh, to try to help him out a little bit. But... He doesn't, he doesn't disagree with it or not believe in it because of an agenda, because that's not his focus. He doesn't believe in it because he doesn't see it in the Word. And maybe the Lord has blinded him to it for a reason. 
It may be the Lord isn't showing him that, that for a reason. Some people are like that. The Lord doesn't let them see that because the joy will be greater when they do. Or the joy may be greater when they get to heaven and suddenly realize, oh, I was wrong, but I'm glad I was wrong. I don't know. But there's a big difference between that and someone who goes out there and attacks anybody who believes in a preacher rapture. Guys, you saw the attacks. <laughs> it was horrible. Some of the stuff that these people would say, just disgusting things that they would say. That's not salvation. There, there's no salvation in a person like that because the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. That is not a quality of the Holy Spirit at all. Now, I've, I've run into a lot of people over the last couple of years that believe in something other than a preacher rapture. That's fine. And I tell them, I said, that's okay. You can believe that if you want to. I have people watching these videos that don't believe in a preacher rapture. That's okay. You believe in what you want to believe, but I'm going to share with you what the Lord has shown me. Now, when the problem comes in is when hatred starts. We can't hate each other because we believe in something different. We can disagree. We are totally allowed to disagree. Paul and Barnabas had a horrible, horrible dissension between them two. They had to get away from each other. It happens. We come to common ground at a certain point. The common ground is the gospel. You can't be anywhere other than one spot on the gospel. Now, I still say that there, the Lord only taught one thing. He didn't teach a doctrine that had multiple meanings. It only had one meaning. But we don't have to separate over a disagreement on facts or a lack of understanding of those facts. It may be that I don't understand the facts. It may be that I've misinterpreted. I don't know. I'm just reading what the word says and trying to apply that. But when that hatred comes in, that's a problem. When division and dissension comes in, that's a problem. A person who is going out of their way to cause division. And there are pastors doing this. There are pastors and teams of other people that are doing this, making it a, their purpose in life is to go out there. This is my, my duty as a Christian is to go out there and destroy every other Christian I can. I see people in some of their video, in their comments, where they agree with them and then the person that runs the channel attacks them anyway. Wait a minute. And they respond with, wait a minute, I'm agreeing with you. Why are you attacking me? I've had this happen to myself. They're doing it not for the purpose of believing. They're doing it not for the purpose of uh, faith and love and spreading the truth. They're doing it because they just want to attack others. They, they, it, they feel powerful when they do that. It's just sheer hatred. There's no Holy Spirit there. That's where we have to read the scriptures on these things. They're people who work in sinning. These people are going out of their way to do anything and everything they possibly can to turn against the truth. The, the headline we read at the beginning... That's, that's been an ongoing thing for a long time. And they won't look at the facts. It has nothing to do with transitioning. It has nothing to do with your identity. It has to do with marketing. And they're marketing the New World Order. In Titus 3, 1 through 11, remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people, for we ourselves are once foolish. Notice it says to avoid quarreling. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Philippians 2, 14 through 16, Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God, without blemish in midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. You know, Paul's talking about us too. We didn't get all the way down to 11 in Titus there, Titus 3, but the verse 11 is, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self-condemned. Why is that person? Let's go to Titus 3, 11, because it didn't put all of it in there. Titus 3. Three. 
So here's where we ended on that one. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Who be poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who had believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. And then we get to the hard part. Verse 9, but avoid foolish disputes. What would be a foolish dispute? A dispute over the rapture? That's a foolish dispute. Now, annihilationism is a little different. People call that a secondary issue to try to take away from the severity of that false doctrine. But what they need to understand is, is that a person who would believe in that may make that their excuse to not get saved. That's a salvation issue for that individual. Now, that's something we want to correct, but you still don't want to sit and have a big discussion about it. Unless it's a discussion on what the truth is. Genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law. We don't want to strive about the law. We love the law, but we know we're not bound under it anymore. For they are unprofitable and useless. Just like it was 2,000 years ago, it's the same today. And he's warning us, don't get involved in this because it will cause problems. It's worthless. There's nothing to gain from this. We can look at a person and say, I'm not going to have this discussion with you because it's not going to bring glory to God and it's not going to bear any good fruit from me or you. And they'll make fun of you. Well, you're just chicken. You're a coward. You don't know what to say. No, I just don't want to have a discussion with you. And leave it at that. Turn around and walk away. There's no shame in it. Uh, I've done it many, many, many times. I want to have a real discussion with facts, not with somebody who's got an agenda and a stupid smile on their face because they think they're going to make me look like a fool in front of a bunch of other people. No, I'm not going to give you the ammunition. I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, well, I won. You this and that. I don't care if you won. It doesn't matter because ultimately, in the end, you're the one that loses when you have to face the Lord and he tells you the truth. So we don't get into those fights because it's not worth anything. It does nothing for us. In fact, it just makes us angry. It can cause us to sin. Verse 10, reject the device of man after the first and second admonition. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Stay away from them. Don't get involved in them. Don't get sucked into these goofy, hate-filled hate discussions. Remember all the stuff everybody was talking about in the Ten Commandments back in 2019? Oh man, some of them were horrible. I've since reached out to several of those individuals that the Grace community was really throwing a lot of shade on and told them, look, I understand where you're coming from. But I don't think you fully understand what you're saying and how you're saying it. <laughs> but I get it. I understand what you're coming from. And if I ever came across as being hateful, I apologize. But this is what the truth is of the word. And it has to be acknowledged and addressed. And they were very amical about that. Because I came to them directly. And some of them even email me every now and then. And some of them have changed how they do their videos too. Which is, which is very encouraging. Because they were willing to actually look at the scripture. But these other people, this is something completely different. This is something so foreign to truth. And it's not by a lack of understanding or a lack of having open eyes or a lack of knowledge of the facts or the context. It's direct disobedience. They purposefully don't want to believe in this because this justifies them doing what they're doing. I used to be a big heavy-duty prepper. Now, I could, luckily, the Lord didn't give me enough money to be able to do it, so I only did a few things. But I've since got rid of all my stuff. I can dumped it all because there was I found I realized by reading through the scriptures there's no purpose in it. It's not going to help anything. Three to six months is all you need. That's that's what anybody should do. Three three to six months. So if something bad does happen, you're covered. 
short term. We're not ever going to plan for long term. There's people that are planning for surviving the entire seven year tribulation. I don't know. And and here's what's funny is, and I've talked to some of them, they believe in a pre trib rapture. Well, okay, well, why are you preparing for the tribulation if you don't think you're going to be here for it? There's a problem there. Most of them are just confused because so many different people are telling them so many different things. Read the Bible. Put your trust in the Lord. He will provide for you. But this other stuff is... And it's not just about the rapture or anything like that. It's it's about salvation. It's about belief. It's about predestination. It's about what Jesus is, who he is. And it's all stuff that goes opposite to what the Bible says. They are doing this for the sole purpose of trying to get something over on somebody. They do this to make money. They see, oh, look at all these people that believe this. Hey, this is an opportunity. I'm going to put a PayPal link. I'm going to put a Cash App link. I'm going to put the Facebook thing leak. I'm going to put all these links in here so they can send me money. And here's a P.O. box that can send me stuff. And they make money hand over fist. They're becoming millionaires. You know how many people on YouTube are millionaires? I'm not talking about the ones that do gaming or anything like that. I'm talking about the ones that are pretending to be Christians. They are millionaires. They won't ever tell you. They're millionaires. Between the ad revenue and all the donations that they're getting. And it can happen overnight. They're not in this for the truth. They're in this for themselves. And there's a terrible state for them to be in. Galatians 6 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Don't get caught up in things you're not supposed to get caught up in. I got somebody in my family that's having this issue right now with a mutual friend. They're in a place that I can't go. They're on the broad road. I can't go there with you. They're out in the darkness in the woods. I can't go there with you. I'm not allowed to go there with you. You've got to come here. You have to come back to us. And I told this individual, you need to leave. Because that's not a good situation for you. You too will be tempted. So preparations are being made. Revelation 3.19 Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. It is a good thing to be reproved and disciplined. Let us respond to that. The proper way. Not like some people do. Uh, there's one guy, I can't remember his channel name now. Um, I've had it out with him a bunch of times. And he talks one way, and then it, it's a certain way for a while, and then he flips the script and says, Oh, I've seen the light. I have this, I have that. And then he flips back. Because he's drawn people in, and then read them the riot act. He derives joy from that. You can't be a believer. He's done it again recently. And uh, uh, somebody else that does videos, uh, I'm not going to name them because I don't want anybody to get involved in that situation, but uh, they got pulled into it. And I told him, I said, be careful. Because he was telling me about that. I said, be careful. Because he's done this several times before and he got me. And I reached out to him and he thinks it's funny. So be careful. I don't know. I think it's real this time as well. And I believe he has done it again, flipped the script again. Um, it's just for the sole purpose and the joy of that. Well, they're going to have all the fun they can enjoy in hell because they're not really believers. And they're going to be reminded of the, the things that they've done to the people that they've done it to for eternity. There's something wrong with that person and they desperately need to change. But that's something the Lord has to do. It's dangerous right now for to be a Christian. That's why God provided us the entire word. 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Be factual. And when it becomes evident that they're not interested in the facts, don't talk to them anymore. I had a guy, he starts, I'll, I'll argue the Bible with anybody. And I said, well, I'm, I'm happy to sit down and go over some things with you. Uh, and talks, he brought up a subject and I started talking. Immediately he starts talking as loud as he can over me. And I said, hey, I put my hand right up in his face and put my fist in his chest. I said, hey, 
If you want to have a discussion like you just said to anybody about the Bible, you got to at least keep your mouth shut long enough to let them say something. Otherwise, it's not a discussion. It's just you talking, and that's retarded. That's stupid. That's ignorant. So until you're ready for that, I'm not going to have a discussion with you on this. Or anything else for that matter. Because clearly you can't sit down and have a, an adult conversation with anyone. Boy, the, all the color drained out of his face. Because ain't nobody ever said nothing like that to him. I turned around and went back to what I was doing. He came up behind me. I, I turned around and looked at him. I said, I don't know what you're standing here for. I'm not interested in having a discussion with you if that's how you're going to act. I have, a, I have discussions with adults, not children. I turned around and walked away. Sometimes you have to be that way with people. Because that's how they are. They're childish. Some people, you have to yell at them to snap them out of their stupor and get their attention. That may be enough later on for them to change. Who knows? Some people, totally different. You can tell. The Holy Spirit will, will, will show you whether they're just in deception. And that they're, maybe their anger and their frustration is coming from being in the deception. And they don't realize it. And then, well, I can show you some scriptures that talk about these things. And then you break them down. Kill them with kindness. You break them down. You show them the truth. A lot of people, when that subject comes up, it's usually about the rapture. And I just take them to Second Thessalonians 2. This is what got me. I, I found this, and I'm like, well, okay, who is this? And that's what convinced me. Because the scripture became clear. This, this entity, this restrainer, has to be removed first. And that told me that in order for these things to happen, it has to be that way. Well, th then it's just at the midway point. Well, no, no. Because he can't just walk out of the desert and say, I'm here. I'm your God. He has to work his way up to that. There has to be a preparation phase for that. And that's the first three and a half years to get him there. So, no. It, it may even be longer than three and a half years. So, no, it, 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 that's not possible. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fall into the timeline of things. And a lot of times people was like, you know what? I'm going to take another look at this. Because this, you've, you've piqued my interest because nobody's ever showed me this before. These are people you can help. These are people you can direct and get them to go down there and do their own investigation and see what they find. But I can tell you from personal experience, most of the people you run into are like that. Because that's not their agenda. They're not focused on the truth. Like the headline we saw at the beginning, they're not focused on the truth. They're just focused on whatever furthers their agenda. And if you just happen to be in the way, they will run you over if they can. James 4, 17, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him in his sin. These people who claim to know Christ and argue these things and do these goofy things and, and go out there and act the way that they act towards others in, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I rebuked all them stupid Christians in your name. But we know what the answer to that is going to be. I never knew you. I never told you to do that. These people know the right thing to do because they read the same Bible we read. They know the truth. I've, I've called a few out last year and the year before on this that were doing this stuff and came to my channel. And I told them, I was like, you know that this is not behavior befitting of a born-again believer. You read the same scriptures I read and yet you still do this. So if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, it's sin. that's a sin that you're doing. And you're going to be called out on the carpet for that. Well, when that dawns on them, they start to change a little bit. And they usually change their tune of their story, trying to put it back on me. And I told them, I said, you have no place here for that. There's no place here for that. You want to have an actual discussion? Email me. We'll have a discussion over email. But I'm not going to let you sling all these hateful comments in my comment section. They never email me. One or two maybe, but never happens. Because th that's not what they're there for. It's not what they've come here for. They've come here to stir up trouble and cause division. Don't have anything to do with them. They're warped and sinning. James one twenty one. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive the meekness, the implant with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. The only way we can go out there and tell others the truth is if we know it. The only way we can act as any form of teacher is if we know the word first. Not memorize it, not be a theological, you know, giant, not somebody who understands other languages and that. Read it. Just read it for what it says. He made it that simple on purpose. Read it. What does it say? Well, that's not what it means. Well, I don't care what it means. I'm reading it for what it says. It says this. 
Now you're saying there's more to it than that. Cool. But show me the other scriptures that led you to that. Don't give me that one scripture and say I'm wrong. Don't look down on me because I didn't go in down the avenue you went down, but instead help me see what you're talking about. When I put that to them and then they still throw the hatred out there, I find out that that's not what they're interested in. Are you interested in helping other people see your your uh, the, what your view of this, or are you just out here to cause problems? They're out here to cause problems. They're out here to cause division and dissension. They're warped and sinning. They have nothing to do with them. Our governments are like this. We have very few people fighting for us in our government today. Most of them are all on that side, and they're all going to pay for that. James 1.19, know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You have to be the moral compass point for them. Because you may have an opportunity to help them see the light. Plant seeds, water seeds, God brings the harvest. But if you find that you're in that situation, get away from that person. What does this all mean and where does this all go to? Hebrews 12, 2, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Think about what Jesus did. Taking all this arguing and all this fighting, like what we have today, taking that all out of the way for a minute. Think about this. Jesus Christ was there. He wasn't created. He was there with the Father at the beginning. His hands created all of us. Before any of us existed, before anything existed, he knew who we were. He had us written down in his book. He brought everything together. He created everything. He supervised everything that went down throughout history. Up to and including the point, you know, when the big boss shows up, that he came and stood on this earth took what he was, which is a glorified being above all beings, standing next to the Father, laid all that down to be born into flesh and then to be recreated or reborn into something brand new. He was resurrected into something brand new. Not only now is he next to the Father, but he can be here at the same time. Whereas before, it, there was a struggle between those things. You can read the Bible and see. Now he can be here and there at the same time. He's something new. And he made the way for us to become this too. It was a great joy for him to be able to have a, such a large group of individuals who would be with him. That we would all be part of the same body. It's amazing. And it's incredible. But what do we see people doing today? They forget about that part. They forget that this is about Christ, not us. And so they go out there and they attack anybody and everybody they find that doesn't believe like they do. You are not the judge of your brother or sister. You're not the judge of Christ's servant. You are also a servant. So you better pull back a few steps and reevaluate why you're doing this and why you're so angry towards that individual that you deem less worthy than you. You'd better start looking at the warnings that are given in the Bible for individuals doing the things that you're doing, specifically mentioning those things that you are doing. I'm talking to those that are listening. And they will most likely dislike this video, and that's fine. He's talking to you in that word. That word that you so quickly want to use to attack another believer, a brother or sister, and I've called a lot of you out on this. Why would you attack a brother in Christ? Aren't we pushing towards the same agenda, which is spreading the word? But instead, what are you doing? You're going in here and you're attacking me. Why? You're attacking other people. Why? You guys are wrong. Y'all are incorrect. and You guys need to be corrected. Okay, why aren't you telling the Muslims that? And they never, to date, in over three years of ministry, not one single individual has ever answered that question. All these individuals that are on their holy roller, high, high, high and righteous cause, 
Well, why aren't you t why aren't you evangelizing the Muslims? Why aren't you telling the Muslims? They won't answer that question. Because for them to answer that question puts them on the spot, puts them in the limelight, causes them to have to admit they're wrong and attacking the wrong people. Why would you as a Christian attack another Christian when instead you should be going to any and all non-believers? We help each other and build each other up, but we teach the other ones, bring salvation to them with by bringing them the gospel. I've had a few Muslims come to my channel and say, hey, we believe in the same Jesus. I'm like, unfortunately, no, we don't. You guys don't believe in the same Jesus I believe in. My Jesus has saved me. He is my, he is my redeemer. He died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the debt for my sins. The Jesus you believe in is not Jesus. He is a false Jesus because he isn't a Messiah. He didn't die on the cross. Well, he just swooned. Is he, yeah, you're believing what they're telling you, the narrative. That's not the truth. And I've only had one that I can recall that actually was like, you know, I'm going to look into this further. Because I told him, I was like, oh, you really need to be very careful. Because you're being lied to by your imams. And it would be important if you would read the Quran for yourself. Because I think you would see something in there that they're not telling you. Yeah, they tell us not to read the Quran. I was like, that, that should trouble you. When a church tells you, well, don't read the book of Revelation, you can't understand it. Or like the Catholic Church says, none of y'all should be reading the Bible. You're not smart enough to understand it. We have to tell you what it says. That's a problem. Because the holy book should be open and, and available to everybody. A lot of hate comes out of that kind of stuff. But I told that guy, I was like, I, I need you to understand that Satan, his image, is on your flag. What image? The, the crescent moon and the star. I said, yes, that's Satan's image. You can find this if you do a little research online in the lore. And he dug around and he was like, okay. He goes, I'm actually looking at it now while I'm commenting back to you. He goes, uh, that's interesting. I was like, it is very interesting. And it shocks me. But there's no wonder why this is the second biggest religion in the world. And there's no wonder why this religion has always been the direct a, a direct opposing force to Judaism and Christianity when no other religion is. Only Islam. I told him, I said, that should cause you to stop and, and wonder why. And even I gave him the surah where it talks about uh, if the people of the book aren't true, this book isn't true. If their book isn't true, this book isn't true. Because the Quran was based in that book. And so he went away. I never heard from him again, but he went away. He said, I'm going to do some more digging in this because this kind of makes sense. This is striking home for me. I hope he got saved. See, that's a good conversation. Two adults talking about something, going over the facts, not this childish hatred that these people are throwing out there. And all those disagreements we have on doctrine... All those disagreements and all those arguments and all those discussions that are had about, well, I think that's this is what this means. Cool. You know, I have not found but one other person that reads Daniel 8 and sees what I see in Daniel 8. And you know what? It's okay. I'm not interested in if anybody agrees with me. I'm not interested in if anybody believes me. Read the words. See what it says. Don't take historical understanding as your stepping off point read it for what it says and then look at the world and see what's going on here when you start to dig deeper you start to realize well there's something wrong here when the previous chapter and the uh chapter after that both refer to a future time that chapter at the second half of it re is referring to a future individual who will walk on this earth and deceive everybody there's no way that happened in the past that chapter applies to the future as well. Well, that's pretty interesting. Especially since we see a lot of that starting to come true. But I don't, I'm don't. i not going to look down on anybody who disagrees with me and doesn't see that. That's okay. You don't have to. Same thing with the rapture. Now, the reason why I fight more on that and on uh, annihilationism is because these are direct contradictions to what Scripture says. They call them secondary issues, but they're not. There's more to that.
If it's something that the word seems to be a little cloudy on, okay. But if it's something the word very specifically says, there's no disputing that. Now, ultimately, God, it's all going to come out in the wash. God's going to get it all straightened out. Our Lord is going to get everybody on the right, on the same plane. Everybody's going to be on the same page whenever he gets everything squared away. It's going to start with us being removed and that he's going to focus on Israel and the unbeliever and the world, Satan and all his boys, and get it all taken care of. And then in the millennial reign, everybody will be on the same page. And we're looking forward to that. Now, there's another discussion on another thing. It's like, look, the Bible says this. You can't just imagine it means something else. It says this. That's a specific one. How can you misinterpret that? It will. He, he will reign for. 1,000 years. Well, there's no misunderstanding a 1,000 years. It's a 1,000 years. But there are people that... Miss it. That's the kind of argument that you can have a discussion on. However, it's not something I'm going to sit down and argue with somebody on. We have to pick and choose what discussions we're going to get involved in. Just like Hebrew says, it's not about all that. It's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Those who overcome will be granted the privilege of sitting on his throne with him. Those who overcome will see him in his glory. Those who believe and obey and submit will stand with him in heaven. All these other arguments and discussions are inconsequential to faith, to Jesus Christ, to the gospel. That is what's important. That's what we all have to get right. We can be a little off on a few things. Okay, cool. Don't make it an issue where it's going to become a dissension between us. Notice Paul and Barnabas, it wasn't, they weren't arguing about theology. They agreed on the theology. They agreed on doctrine. They were arguing about an individual person. We let our pride get in the way of a lot of things. I don't want to be right. I want Jesus to be right. I want the word to be right. I'm not interested in being right over someone else. But when the word says X, I'm not going to entertain an answer of Y or Z. If it says X, then the answer is X. But what I won't do is get into a shouting match or get into an argument where there's names being called about these things. I'm going to sit down and talk to somebody. The guy that, well, he wrote a book. Uh, he's here in Texas somewhere. He wrote a book uh, and commented that Jesus didn't sweat blood. He thought that was stupid and retarded and couldn't believe Christians were preaching that kind of stuff. I said, well, this is an actual medical condition that was discovered several hundred years before Jesus lived. And Luke, being a physician who records this, uh, would have understood this and knew what this was. It's extreme stress or straining. Um, there's been bodybuilders and powerlifters who this has happened to. Uh, the most notable one is the guy many years ago who picked up 1,200 pounds off on a, on a dead squat. Or not a squat, a um, deadlift. And um, he was bleeding out of his eyes, his ears, his, his sweat and blood all over the place. It, it happens. It's a normal thing. It's rare, but it happens. It happens more often to weightlifters and powerlifters than it does to um, individual people. But it does happen. He deleted his comments. I didn't attack him. I just shared the truth with him. The stuff that's going on today between Christians is just horrendous. And it makes people not even want to talk about it anymore. But we still have to talk about these things. We still have to stand our ground. We still have to fight that fight. 
And it's not against the individual person, and that person isn't individually attacking us. It's not personal. They're attacking something else. They're attacking doctrine, theology, truth. They're attacking Christ and his word. Not us. It's not personal against us. Some of them don't realize what they're doing, and they come out of it, thankfully, that the Lord opens their eyes to the truth, and they repent. Many of them don't. What are we to do? How are we to engage this? Give them the truth. Stand in the truth all the time. Look to Jesus. And when it's impossible to get a right answer together, tell them, well, I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. And I'm going to read his word for what it says. And if I'm wrong, he's going to correct me. And I have faith in him for that. And I know also by that same faith, if you're wrong, he'll correct you. Even if we can't come to an agreement, it's not about us. It's about them. This title to this article that I showed at the very beginning, I couldn't read because the first minute or two of the videos, the, the algorithm likes to gut check those. And if there's the, if it, if it come, picks up anything that it doesn't like, uh, it will shut your video down. This transgender and homosexual agenda has been the bane of the existence of the church. It's been the bane of the existence of truth. And now it's coming full circle because we didn't do something about it before. We didn't help the people understand before. Funny enough, it is I used to get in these huge, huge discussions on Facebook years ago. It's, it's gender dysphoria. It's a psychological condition. People, thousands and thousands of people go and talk to professionals and come to find out what's going on and come to terms with it. And then it makes sense. And then they go and they live normal lives and everything's fine. Those who go through these procedures end up with regret. And the suicide rate is now over 50%. That is a terrible thing and that should not be happening. We've got to do something about that. And the answer isn't to cut on you more. The answer isn't to put yourself in a position where you could be mocked and scoffed. The answer is to get help. There is nothing normal about thinking you're something other than you're not. If a little boy puts on a cape and runs around pretending he's Superman, is that okay? Is that normal? Yeah, he's a kid. He's pretending. It's normal. When an adult decides they're a completely different gender, is that normal? And then wants to argue and fight with people over that? No, there's nothing normal about that. But instead of helping the individuals, we've empowered them to go further down into the darkness. And that title, that, that article that I showed the title to at the beginning of the video, is an example of that. To the point that they're taking the Word of God now and trying to change it in order to make it accepting. At what point did you think that would be a good idea. At what point did it, it, it hit anybody? Well, let's just write our own and it'll make it okay. At what point does a pastor, and this is an actual pastor, I, I've seen the interviews with him, stand up in a discussion with other pastors saying he enjoys having sex with men and sees no problem with it and thinks the word of God is wrong in its, in its interpretation, and that Paul was wrong in his assessment of these individuals, he's a pastor of a church. Well, we've got to include everybody in it. No. Listen, the bus... There's a bus that runs to heaven and a bus that runs to hell. The bus that runs to heaven has got some mechanical issues, but it's running. The bus that runs to hell runs perfectly, and they run every 10 minutes. It was never intended for us to include everybody in salvation. Jesus never intended to include everybody. He very specifically says in the word, there are some who will not believe. Many there are that will find the wide path. Few there are that would find the narrow one. Few there are that would find the narrow gate. Many people will find the narrow path, but still won't find the narrow gate. That surprised me when I read that. Like So the, the, a lot of people are going to find the path, but 
they're not going to find the gate. How? How is this a thing? Well, it's because it's the word of God, the narrow gate. Remember I showed you. It's the Bible. That's the narrow gate. The narrow way is the spine of it. You've got to get into that word and read what that word says and abide by what that word says. The hardest thing a person can do is to shun the entire world and say, I don't believe anything that you were saying is true unless it coincides with what the scripture says. 99% of everything in the world is not true. <laughs> the only 1% or less, probably less, aligns with the Bible. So you're going to be very alone. You're going to be, and there's a purpose for this discussion. You're going to be very alone. You're going to be by yourself. And the world will look down on you, but at the same time, they will look on you in awe. Because when you walk according to God's statutes, when you walk in a way that shows his Holy Spirit within you, not attacking people and and, and harassing people, but reaching out to them and saying, well, this is actually what the truth is. And you can have this. Right now, you don't. You think you have it, but you don't. But you can have this. It only takes one step. Go to God in prayer. Repent. Tell him, Lord, I'm, I'm making a mistake, and I need to change my mind. I need your help to do so. And do it with a thankful heart. And watch what he does. Your life will change in an instant. Your understanding will change overnight. And they don't know how to respond to somebody like that. Because they've never met somebody like that. I can't tell you how many times people have run into them. I've had discussions with them about the Bible. Random discussions. Like, I've never met anybody like you before. I told them, I said, that's because you've never met a real Christian before. An actual believer who believes the word of God. I don't want to change it. I don't want to make it adjusted to make it suit my needs. I believe what it says on the face. And when the Lord leads me to dig deeper, I find more things that prove what it says. Not prove something different, which blows my mind how somebody can say, yeah, I read it and I believe that, but then when I dug deeper, I believe something else. When you dug deeper, it should have proved more of what you already believed. Not led you to a different place. The whole purpose of this video today is what you're seeing is true. What you're seeing is real. What you're seeing is actually happening. As shocking as it may be to see the things and hear the things that people are doing and saying, it's true. It's happening. And the Bible told us it was going to happen to the greatest level of specificity possible. There is no doubt that all this stuff that's happening is leading up to one one thing. And that is going to be the revealing of the Antichrist. Something has to happen before that. The restrainer must be removed, taken out of the way, in order for him to be revealed. And until he is taken out of the way, he cannot be revealed. People have already started to admit that he's here. And they know who he is. They've given him access to funds. They've created all these avenues because they're trying to bring him out into the front, but he cannot come out yet because the restrainer is still here. And I feel sorry for this world when he comes out. Peace and safety, peace and safety. It'll be three and a half years of wonderful times. Yeah, you think that. That's not what the Bible says. They'll think it's nice, but it won't be. It'll be horrible. It'll be horrific. People will be dying while they're listening to them say, it's everything's good, guys. We got it all under control. And they will be dying right there while they're listening to it. The whole seven years is going to be horrible death and destruction. But what does they what do the what does the world say? Oh no, it's going to be okay. It'll be fine. You don't understand. That's why you have to get saved. If you're saved, you already know this. If you're saved, you already read it. You already see it. The Lord's already revealed it to you. If you're not saved, you don't know these things. You don't know the truth. And you're self-deceived. And you're self-condemned. And if you're going against everything that God says, if you're doing everything you can to counter what he's told us to do, you're warped and sinning. And you must change. Because if you don't, there is nothing but darkness and torment waiting for you for eternity. You're going to get a thousand year taste at the table. A thousand years minimum. 
Some people have been there for several thousand years. You're going to be a thousand years minimum. And then you're going to be pulled out. And you're going to get that little reprieve to go stand in front of God. And then it's all back up. Most people are going right back in there. Well, they're going to the next one, which is the lake of fire. And you'll never get out of that one. People need to know this, but the world doesn't talk about it. People need to know what's coming, but the world won't tell them. That's where we come in. As faithful individuals, knowing the word, knowing the truth, that's where we come in. Yeah, I don't know if I believe all that, but you should, because the Bible says it quite specifically, quite clearly. You might want to consider that, because you may not have tomorrow. You may not have the next 10 minutes. You may not have a week from now. Oh, you got to drive three, three states away to go to a wedding? You know how many people have wrecks two miles from their house? You might not make it. You better get that taken care of now. And you better figure out whose side you're on now. Because as the headline I showed at the beginning of the video clearly shows us, they've chosen their side. And it's not God's side. And they are going to pay dearly for that. But we know better, don't we? Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for this word. This wonderful, wonderful word of truth that tells us the truth about ourselves, about the world, about others. This is a bit of a somber prayer and video today, but nonetheless, we still have to address these things. I lift up our government and our officials in this country and in every country for clarity. Now, I know as I say this, that most of them, they've already been marked out for what they, what's coming and what their part is that they're going to play in all this. But I still lift them up because you commanded us to pray for them, that we may live peaceful lives. And I pray for them. <clears throat> I pray for them. Uh, for our state, I lift up Governor Abbott and his his cabinet and his his group that works with him, that, that he continues to do the right thing, the godly thing, and that you make him more so. Bring him further into the light and, and make him act further on behalf of what's right for this state and what's right in the scriptures. And I pray that you do that with other states. I pray that you do that with this whole country, that get this government out of there. Because they are bringing us into judgment. We've already seen it. We know it's here. We, other countries are right there too. They're, they're under judgment because of the leadership. Father, we lift this leadership up for you to deal with, for you to handle. And if they seek evil, if they seek our destruction, then we ask in, their, in your name that they be rebuked by you. The evil forces that are doing everything they can to bring all this down. We pray you rebuke them so that we may live a peaceful life while we're here, while we're still on this earth. That the children may, may have a chance to actually grow up and live versus the alternative that's been happening. You know, you can't shed that much blood and not have some repercussions from it. And we know this. But Father, we call out from this earth to have mercy on those you love. Have mercy on those who exist here. Whether they're good or evil, have mercy on them and to do something about this leadership. Put a stop to this nonsense. I also lift up all those who call themselves Christians who would attack the brethren. Obviously, they don't think we're brethren if they are attacking us. Father, I pray you either open their eyes or shut them down. Help them see the light and the truth about what they're doing. <coughs> and truly get into the sheepfold. Shut them down. Stop them. Stop their mouths. Make them cease from speaking. They are taking your word and they are insulting it. They are taking your memory and your commandment and your law and they are destroying it and twisting it and remaking it into something that suits their lusts and desires. They're taking what Christ did on the cross and they're mocking it in the street. Saying things like, bring Christ again, we'll kill him again. 
not knowing that the sword is already being laid on their neck, not knowing that the time is here for the greatest suffering this earth has ever seen or ever will see, and not knowing that they will be made to live through it. They will seek death, but will not find it, unless they repent. I don't know if people call out for these things. I don't know if people lift up prayer for these things. Father, we put it in your hands because we can't change it. But we can certainly pray about it. And we believe that you answer prayer. And we have faith that you act on behalf of those that are yours. On behalf of your children. So we ask that you do something in your perfect will, in your perfect way. That you do something about these people. Take these people who are the enemies of the word and shut them down for good. Or get them saved, one or the other. Take these people that are doing everything they can to follow this agenda of the devil. And remove them from our country. That our country would live in peace. It would be a fragile peace, but at least it will be peace. That things will go back to some form of normal. And we know they're not going to for, you know, completely because of where we're at. We know we're in that time. We know we're right there up against it. But it can still be as good as possible until that, until everything goes. And help us reach more people. Help us reach more people that are looking for help, that are looking for something. And it's the call on their heart to get saved. Help us find them. Help us to engage with them. Help us to share with them the truth. Be it a word, a good morning, something that starts the conversation and we can tell them that the Lord is watching and he's coming and you had better get saved now. Father, we trust you for all these things. We trust our complete welfare into your hands so that we may walk in a way that is godly, so that we may be helpful to those who need it, so that we may Help those understand that need to understand the truth contained within your scripture and the truth about the future of this world. It's going to be burned up. There's not going to be anything left. Father, we laid all this at your feet. We put the, all this in your hands. We can't enact change here unless you back that change up. So we pray for that change. We pray for all of these things and so many more to be dealt with in your perfect way. Because when you do it, it lasts. When you do it, it goes exactly the way it's supposed to. We pray blessings over the lost and the saved. We pray mercy over the lost and the saved. We pray grace over the lost and the saved. And we pray that the influence of Satan will be diminished greatly, if not completely, at least in this country. And that you will upset the heavenly powers. And give us a little bit more time to be more effective. If it's if that's even possible right now. With the way things are going. Thank you Father. For your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Father, Father don't let them twist your word. And help us to not allow them to twist your word. But to call them out. <laughs> where they stand. Where they sit. Where they lie down. To call them out. And to shut them up. Because it is insulting and disgusting. What they're doing with your word. I take it pretty personally because it's wrong, wrong, wrong. We know it's wrong. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for saving us and calling us and <coughs> bringing us to redemption. We, we offer these prayers in his name, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. This one was on my heart for a little while now, but I hadn't had an opportunity to address it. But after I saw that headline this morning, I thought, well, now's a great time to address this. And it may not have made a lot of sense at first, but I hope it did at the end. There's a great deal of evil going on behind the scenes, but there's so much of it now, it's bleeding over into the front. What do we do? We pray, just like what I prayed. We pray. We get fired up about this stuff and pray. I've got people that I know that are falling left and right, and I don't know what to do. So you know what? But I don't have the right words, and then there's no opportunities that arise to share the truth. I'm praying. 
But the time is f fast approaching where I'm going to start grabbing people by the collar and shaking them. Hey, you need to wake up. <laughs> this is about to go off. If you're not ready. If you're not lamp isn't full of oil. You're not going anywhere. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I know what you're going through out there. I'm going through it too. Stay strong. Stay focused. Get fired up. Get fired up for the Lord. Get fired up for them and share them the truth. They are not going to like it. But it's what they need. See you in the next video.